So you want to know why? Why is that? What's the hype about the Class A 32 channels of summing? That's what we want to know. What is? What does that mean? What's it do? Exactly. Um, does it have a cape? Um, <laughs> it might. It might. Um, it's what separates this studio from the other guys out there. It separates the men from the boys as far as how the final product is, is being represented. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty simple, actually, in, in, in essence. You got the average guy out there that's got a great Pro Tools rig with some great plugins, and he mixes, and everything goes down this little two channel digital bus and then comes out and it's printed or it's bounced back down into Pro Tools if they're bouncing in there. Here's the huge difference here. Mine, I have enough converters, Apogee converters. I have D to A, two 16 channel D to A converters, which equals 32, do the math, which go to an SPL box, name of the company SPL, and it's 32 channels of Class A discrete summing which is the same scenario, say you're going to take your Pro Tools rig at the hit factory down here in Miami and what they do is they route it to an SSL which gives each of your tracks a separate fader, a separate place to go. It's separating it all, it's giving it depth, it's giving it the stereo field is, is wider, it's got more imaging, um, it's, it's the same as sending it through a console is what I'm doing here, except it's a rack mount piece that's 32 channels of Class A summing. And then that goes out into my compressor of choice, whether it's going to be distressors if I want to smash the living god out of it, or um, the Fatso, or uh, my SSL, or maybe all of them. So it's, it's a big difference. Anyone who's heard it is, yeah, I don't know, and well, a couple of my buddies that are doing the same thing have bought the same setup now because you know they don't want to be they don't want me to be the only guy in town doing that. So is this um this is something that you might say I have to have this this is something that you got when you first started putting the studio together or you this was, figured it out? This is when the new studio came together. This was a must have thing for me. Um, to be able to have that kind of separation and just have it have it going into the analog world and not be sterile in the digital world and just stay in the box. And I didn't want to totally mix in the box. Okay. So Meaning inside Pro Tools. Every, everything's got its own little, you know, it's it's you're 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 eliminating the factor of bottlenecking. Um, when you're when you're mixing digital, um, you got everything going down this little it's like traffic getting merged into one lane. You got six lanes of highway and everything eventually gets merged into one lane. All that traffic's got to slow down and it's got to start creeping along and find a place where to go. It's the same scenario where, where you, when you're mixing as far as being in the, in the digital realm. Um, all that information is going down a little digital bus and it gets crammed and it's, it's got no place to breathe. It's got no place to say, ah, you know, everyone's, everyone's you know, like this. All your information, your, your bass tracks, your guitar, your drums, everything. With this, I, I, my kicks go into its own channel. My snares go into its own channel. The vocals go into its own channel. If I start running out of channels, eventually, yeah, I could stack some things on top. Say all my keyboards say to you know a stereo pair. That's cool. Um, try and strategically locate it all so everything's not going to the same place at one time. Uh, maybe you have keyboards playing in this section and not in that section. They could share that bus then. So you could have stereo buses. You could have mono buses. It's 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 a console essentially without faders and without EQs and without you know any of the, any of the toys but it's essentially a console is how you're routing